Hi, uh, good day to everyone. Uh, to Miss, uh, to our uh, professor, Dr. Amihan, and to my uh, classmates. My name is Mr. Elmerito C, and I'm here to report the case study 5.5 title is When Teachers Fight. Uh, I would like to uh, begin with the uh, persons uh, involved. So number one is Ms. Uh, Carol Johnson, the director of the uh, daycare center in a large metropolis. The second person is Ms. Tanya, a newly promoted uh, head teacher of the two-year-old classroom and a former assistant uh, teacher. The third person is Miss Delta. Uh, she's Tanya's little sister. She also worked at the school as an assistant teacher. She was hired uh, due to Tanya's high praise of her little sister's work with children. So this is the scenario. Tanya is a single mother with a three-year-old uh, child. She also cares for her uh, sick elderly mother who suffers from multiple sclerosis. Uh, her family had spent several years living in a shelter which has been a very hard on everyone. Currently, the money Tanya brings home is the family's major income. The head teaching promotion has given her ability to move her child and her mother out of the shelter. Miss Johnson is aware of this situation and has seen the pride Tanya has felt as she was finally able to move her family into a small uh, but safe place that they can call home. Tanya has tried valiantly to get everyone in her family back on their feet. Because of this, Tanya's little sister, Delta, who also works at the school as an assistant teacher, she was hired due to Tanya's high praise of her little sister's work with children. Delta always has a smile on her face each morning and has proved to be a hardworking, caring assistant. Unfortunately, situations change. Thursday uh, started out like any other day of work. It was a warm spring day and the children were playing outside. They had a good lunch and began to have their rest time. During the children's break, the teacher took their lunch in shifts. One teacher went to lunch while the other watched the sleeping class. Normally, it is important for the teacher to eat her lunch with a limited period and then return to enable the other teacher to eat within the time span of press time. In this particular day, Miss Delta took the first shift for lunch in her room. After a long period of time, she didn't return. The other teacher in the room became became annoyed because she was hungry and needed a break. Tanya heard about her little sister's lateness and volunteered to miss her own lunch and watch the room so that the other teacher could take a break. As time went by, Tanya became more and more upset. When Delta finally arrived back from, from lunch an hour late, Tanya was furious. She was told her sister that her lateness was a bad, was a bad reflection of her uh, own standing within the school. She told her she, was miss, uh, she had missed her own lunch. Despite the reprimand, Delta didn't seem to care. In fact, she responded by indicating that Tanya should mind her own business and not tell her how to handle her professional life. Although the children were still sleeping during the rest time, the two sisters began shouting at one another in the classroom. Tanya was furious and Delta edged her sister on by telling her to punch if she was so mad. Their shouting grew so loud that Miss Johnson could hear it in her office. Uh, in her office at the other end of the uh, school. Sorry for that. Miss Johnson ran out of the, her office to discover that the cause of the shouting, by the time she arrived, Tanya had pushed Delta into stack of chairs and both teachers were screaming. In fact, Tanya was being held back physically by two other teachers who were trying to prevent the fight from escalating. 
In other classrooms, the teachers were doing their best to shield the children from altercation, but due to the volume of the shouting, the youngsters in their small room were aware of the fight. Some even witnessed the pushing and shoving. Miss Johnson's presence quickly ended the altercation, but the damage had been done. She separated both teachers and made them take independent walks outside to cool down. Children and teachers saw and heard the altercation. Of all the teachers, all of the teachers were upset and worried. Some of the children seemed to be fine as many of them had slipped through the fight, but others looked a little anxious and confused. Miss Johnson's immediate reaction was that sh uh, she should fire Tanya and Delta on the spot. However, it didn't seem to be such an easy decision when it came to Tanya. Miss Johnson knew that if she did this, Tanya, her child, Tanya, her child and her ailing mother would end up back in the shelter. Miss Johnson returned to her office and closed the door while she decided what to do. Uh, first, uh, before we go to the question and uh, answer or the discussion part, I uh, would like to discuss about this uh, uh, some uh, information here. So first is what is physical assault. A physical assault occurs when a person uses physical violence and causes injury to another person's body. If the person causes a person's death, uh, if the violence causes a person's death, the crime may be called a homicide. If someone threatens you with harm or behaves in a way that makes you think they will harm you, this can also be a crime. You can contact, of course, your local police station to report non-urgent situations such as a physical assault that happened in the past, threats of harm where there is no immediate danger. And also about the U.S. Code Ethics for the Teaching Profession that says unprofessional conduct would result in suspension or revocation of certification or teaching credentials. Uh, also, the core principles for the uh, Code of Ethics uh, to help us achieve our mission, we're committed to three core ethical principles, commitment to excellence, district and personal integrity, and responsibility. In making ethical decisions, while the Code of Ethics provides general guidance only, it does not provide a complete listing or a definite answer to every possible ethical situation. When making decisions, we should use good judgment to fulfill the spirit as well as the letter of the code. The references and sections of the code list other documents such as laws, rules, policies, bulletins that made more detailed guidance. So when making a decision, it is suggested, evaluate the situation and identity of the ethical issues, follow the rules, consult the code of ethics, law, district rules, regulations, bulletins, policies, and procedures, and apply them to the situation. Ask for a guidance if you needed from a supervisor. If supervisor is involved in the problem, then contact his or her supervisor or the ethics uh, office for help. Make and carry out decision that is consistent with the rules and develop excellence, integrity, and responsibility. So now let's go for the questions for discussion. Number one, can Ms. Johnson justify keeping Tanya in her position? What does the law say regarding this kind of behavior in a preschool situation? Uh, Ms. Johnson cannot keep uh, Tanya uh, in her position since uh, Tanya committed a physical assault to Delta which is considered as a crime, Tanya will lose her teaching credential because of her unprofessional acts, so she can no longer work as a teacher. Uh, number two, if there is no law, there should be one. Why? There is a law regarding a physical assault, regardless of Tanya and Delta's relationship. So they would be uh, yeah, a, a case uh, uh, Delta can uh, file against uh, her uh, sister, uh, Tanya, the physical uh, assault. Uh, number three, should Miss Johnson take into account the problems that Tanya and her family will face if she loses her employment? Should she take into account Delta's difficulties? I know it's going to be a hard decision, especially that uh, Miss Johnson's uh, was aware of uh, Tanya's uh, financial uh, situation. But as an administrator, Ms. Johnson should not take into account uh, 
Tanya and Delta's personal situation to make a decision. Miss Johnson can, if she wants, uh, uh, if she, if Miss Johnson wants to give uh, Tanya's uh, another chance, so she could uh, issue a warning letter uh, because we know that Tanya is a good teacher and loved by parents and students. As regards for Delta, Miss Johnson should reprimand her about not doing her responsibilities and give warning. If Delta will do it again, then Miss Johnson can terminate her employment. Number four, as a professional, if you were in Miss Johnson's shoes, what would you do in this case? How would you explain your decision? Discuss. So I research of uh, what the uh, supervisor can do in this uh, situation, and these are the results. Uh, as a supervisor, uh, these are the suggestions when there's an uh, issues of fight between uh, two teachers. As a supervisor, I will get to the bottom of what precipitated that heated exchange and takes steps to prevent the recurrence. In some situations, a personality conflict may be at the root of the problem, and both employers should be asked to identify the step each, uh, the steps each will take to get along and manage their emotions. As a supervisor, I will keep close eye on the situation and intervene early. If either party acts inappropriately, documentation of the fight at work is important in the event that the problem recurs and job termination becomes necessary. Uh, what to do as a supervisor if you saw two employees fight? So these are the suggestions. A supervisor must take immediate action when verbal or physical altercation occurs between two employees in the workplace. Depending on the level of the threat, intervention may mean summoning security guards or calling the police. The safety of other workers must be at the top priority in getting control of the situation. Supervisor must be trained to recognize the signs of troubles to prevent such disruptive incidents from occurring in the first place and intervene before tempers erupt. Preparedness also is an essential first step in preventing and addressing employee altercation. Problems are more likely to occur and escalate with potentially uh, deadly outcomes when management fails to take swift and appropriate action. A workplace violence prevention policy and protocol should be tailored to the organization. However, all companies or schools should have a policy that identifies prohibit behavior such as bullying, verbal abuse, intimidation, threats, shoving, and hearing. Employees need to be trained on the policy and advice of the likely consequences for engaging in any misconduct. The U.S. Department of Labor indicates that a supervisor should call for assistance and not intervene directly if a physical altercation happens at work. As per company procedure, along with the assessing the risk of harm to individuals or properties, the supervisor should call 911 or security personnel on duty. Termination of one or both employees involved in the conflict. Fights at work can affect the morale and productivity of other workers and cannot be ignored. Thank you for your uh, time.